Last session, we talked about multiple ways of configuring spring dependency injection. We saw how uh, these different types of configurations at the end of the day are boiled down into a list of special structure named bean definitions that the dependency injector will use them to identify, resolve, wire, and provide objects. By crossing off the XML configuration, there are two sorts of bean definitions. The first one is the uh, classes annotated by at component annotation, which is the essence of uh, annotation-based configuration. The second source is methods annotated by at bean annotation, which is the essence of Java-based configuration. But we are using the terms bean and component a lot without defining them and knowing the differences or their origin. When you dig into the history and multiple books, we track the root and the origin of the term component to the EJB specification of Java. But what is a component today and what was component inside EJBs? Back then, uh, EJB introduced components as standalone services that could be used remotely. But now, the component term inside dependency injection frameworks, especially in Spring, means a simple POJU class with a bunch of extra characteristics attached to it. Let's enumerate those extra characteristics. First, a component is managed, meaning that the programmer has offloaded all the responsibilities from instantiating it all the way to caching and destroying it. Second characteristic of a component is that it is a scope, meaning that it specifies how many instances will be created based on the region and context it will be used. Third, it is substitutable, meaning that the requester and the client code might be passed a wrapped or extended instance of this class without being aware. Fourth, it is interceptable, meaning that custom and extra behavior could be plugged into this class methods and it is a normally written logic could be intercepted. Fifth, a component have a life cycle, meaning that after being instantiated, it might have multiple phases and, and most importantly, it will have a destruction method that will be called by the tool that manages it. The sixth uh, characteristic and the last one is that uh, a component is named, meaning that other than its type, it has a unique name and it might have a bunch of aliases or qualifiers that will be used to uniquely identify it. That was the definition of a component in the context of dependency injection tools. Now inside the spring, by annotating one of your classes as at component, you are passing the management of this class to the dependency injector in a spring. You are assigning a name to it, which by default is the name of the class. You are specifying its scope, which is by default singleton. And of course, by using other annotations and uh, implementing maybe some special interfaces, you could specify its lifecycle related methods. And also you could plug extra behavior by using other annotations. So all these information, such as type of the Java class, its name, the qualifiers, lifecycle related methods, interception points, and extra behavior will be grouped into a form of a bean definition. But what is a bean? Instead of being a Java class in the component case, a bean is an object. It is an instance of some class, not the class itself. So after instantiating a component annotated class by Spring, that instance would be a bean. So all those characteristics of the component is inherited by the bean as well. So in that sense, a bean is not a simple object. It is managed, it is scoped, 
It has a unique name. It has uh, defined life cycle methods, and it might be wrapped to be extended by extra behavior. So in spring, because by using Java-based configuration, we are defining a bunch of methods that will return special objects with some characteristics. And because the result of methods will be an instance of some class, the annotation is called at bin. All those characteristics of a component could be used and added to at bean annotated methods as well. To wrap it up, a bean definition in a spring, whether it comes from a class that is annotated by at component, or whether it is a at bean annotated method, will group all those information and characteristics. And the spring container or dependency injector will use those information inside bean definitions to identify and resolve and find out which class should be instantiated or which object should be returned to the caller and how. Now let's jump to coding and see this stuff in action.